Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about micro XRF and how it can be applied to mineral exploration. So first of all, I'll go through what, what micro XRF technology is, how we can then turn the chemistry into mineralogy, and then ways that we can then apply that to mineral exploration. So this is an example of the type of element distribution maps that can be produced by the micro XRF. This one's an 18 centimetre long piece of core. Um, I highlight it, put it up there in particular because you can see the calcium and strontium rich veining through the embligonite on the left hand side. And this is invisible in the hand specimen and has been linked to groundwater penetration in the sample. So micro XRF is similar to portable XRF in that you bombard the sample with x-rays, this ionizes the atoms and then the energy that's released in the term which is fluorescence, is then captured by the detector. The primary difference between the two is that the micro XRF has a capillary optic applied to it, which enables you to really focus that spot size down to 25 microns. So I've put a little image there to just show you the difference between a portable XRF spot size, which can range from three to eight millimeters, and then the micro XRF. So you're looking at a much better resolution when you scan your core or any kind of sample. The ability to analyse heterogeneous samples because you're looking at those small spot size is enabled by the use of fundamental parameters. So rather than using a standard based system, you're using uh, mathematical algorithms to determine the chemistry. The quantification can go from carbon to uranium. It's able to measure those lighter elements below sodium because it's got a vacuum based system so it can pick up the energy that's being released from those lighter elements. The addition of mineral identification software enables you to turn this element information into mineral maps, which can be both qualitative and quantitative. So the benefits of micro XRF include that it's non-destructive, it requires minimal sample preparation and in some cases no sample preparation at all. It doesn't need to be carbon coated in the same way that an SEM um, sample does. It can have variable sample height, so when you're wanting to collect qualitative data, you would want to have about a one millimetre variation across your sample height. When you're looking at quantitative, sorry, qualitative data, you don't need that variation. They can be relatively rough samples. That means you can measure a versatile range of samples. You can get your core, your pulps, your thin sections, and just hand specimen. The chamber for these micro XRF instruments can be up to 65 by 35 centimetres and the mappable area for that is 16 by 19 centimetres. So if you've got a sample bigger than that, you can still analyse it, you just need to, it needs to be moved after the first part has been scanned. And you can also scan multiple pieces of core or samples within the same, um, within the same time frame. The detection limit for this instrument goes down to ppm level for your transition and your heavier elements um, but your lighter elements are still in that weight percent range so your sodium your magnesium and lighter so when you analyze your um, sample with the micro xrf you create an element distribution map and this is done by collecting an x-ray spectrum for every single pixel within your sample and this can be done on the fly which means that as your sample is as your analysis as the instrument is moving across your sample it's collecting the spectrum as it goes which means that it can get the data much quicker and takes much less time to do your analysis and now i'm going to talk about how we turn that chemistry into mineralogy so we use mineral identification software. The example I'm using is the M4 Amix software because that's software I've used personally, but they're all very similar in style. So these are automated systems and they produce digital images and surface profiles. They, can, they contain a comprehensive database with more than 2,000 minerals and these are both synthetic phases that have been computer generated as well as minerals that have actually been analysed. You can also create mineral mixtures, which means because a thing with XRF is that the penetration into the sample can be much deeper than with your electron beam. And so when you're getting to those boundaries, you can sometimes be capturing multiple, you know, the mineral below as well as the mineral above. So you want to get a mineral mixture so you can really capture those boundaries. Um, so 
In total, this software can be used to collect particle and grain size and shape distribution information, as well as identifying your minerals, determining your mineral associations, getting modal mineralogy information, and for mineral liberation. So this is my first example. This is from a spodumene-rich zone in an LCT pegmatite. Um, as many people have already mentioned, it can be difficult to differentiate between spodumene and quartz in your hand samples. This is a scan that was taken with the micro XRF. So we chose a particular section of the sample and created this map. So you can easily differentiate between the spodumene and the quartz. It's because they're very chemically different. We're also able to identify three other mineral phases within the sample and we're able to then quantify this so you know exactly how much spodumene is in your sample so that can help with your grey control and your ore estimates. The next one was a comparison between micro XRF and SEM so the same sample was analysed with both methods and they produced pretty comparable results. The micro XRF slightly underestimated the amount of quartz and overestimated the amount of biotite, but considering the additional cost and complexity with SEM analyses, it's a pretty, the micro XRF could be quite beneficial for this type of analysis. Micro XRF can also analyze larger samples, but it is at a lower resolution than your typical SEM. This sample was measured at 100 micron step size, which is why the image on the left is quite grainy. But you can still see the textural features and mineral associations in the sample. The last example is a quick was done for quick screening of ore. So this is from Champion Mine in the USA, and they were looking at chalcosite. As you can see, you can easily identify it. Um, you can see the textural association with the other mineral phases, and they were able to identify additional elements such as your sorry, additional minerals such as your calcite and your muscovite. So there are many ways that you can use micro XRF in exploration. These are just a few that I'm highlighting today. You can take the guesswork out of mineral identification, so when you're looking at visually similar minerals and when you're trying to estimate the amount of each mineral within your sample, this can really help. It can identify your alteration minerals and your assemblages, which is useful for determining the conditions of your ore deposit formation, and can determine the chemical variations within your minerals, both using your element distribution and quantification and also with your mineral software. These all, can, the, all these features can then be used to understand the mineral system quickly for determining the genesis of your alteration as well as your mineralization and can then be used for all grade control estimates. And another, another additional benefit is that you could use it when determining which samples you want to use for further analysis. So rather than sending all your samples to be analysed with SEM and those more costly methods, you can use the micro XRF to determine which samples are best for that type of analysis. So in conclusion, this method is non-destructive. It enables the rapid analysis of your samples with mineral sample preparation or no sample preparation at all. It enables you to determine element composition and distributions with on-the-fly measurements. And you can then use this element information to get high resolution mineral abundance and distribution maps. I would like to thank Brooker for the use of images and data in this presentation and thank you all for listening.